What is going on guys, it's Bucky and welcome to your 55th tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be beginning to talk about something called polymorphism. Now polymorphism is a subject that gives a lot of students and a lot of people problems because whenever someone tries to explain it, they make it really confusing. So let me give you guys just a basic example, um, you know, not through code or anything. I just want to talk to you guys for a second. So say you wanted to make a computer game and you know that your computer game you wanted to include a bunch of enemies like monsters and ninjas and you know just a bunch of different types of enemies well all of these enemies shared a common function say they all had an attack function to try to attack you however they all attacked you in kinda of different ways maybe the ninja threw a sigh at you and a monster tried to scare you from under your bed and you know all these different enemies even though they had the same function you know they worked a little bit different well what polymorphism allows you to do is it allows you to call that same attack function on many different objects and since all of these objects like ninjas and monsters since they're all enemies um, this is why it's valid so since they all inherit from the same class you can call attack on each different object and even though uh, ninja has an attack and monster has an attack even though you're calling the same function on different objects they all know what to do they all know that they're supposed to attack you in some way so what polymorphism basically allows you to do is use the same function and have many different outcomes so that's the basic uh, idea behind polymorphism but there's actually a lot to understand so let's go ahead and get to it so let's go ahead and start making that computer game now so go ahead and make a class and we'll name it enemy and don't forget put your uh, semicolon at the end and now let's go ahead and let's say that we're gonna have a ninja and a monster and they're each gonna have an attack power how much they're gonna hurt you so let's go ahead and well since we learned what protected is we can go ahead and use that and we'll put int attack power so now every enemy has an attack power so now let's of course make a function in order to set that attack power so we'll make it public of course and we'll just make it void set attack power and this is going to take one parameter of course some number and using that number we're going to set the attack power and again this attack power doesn't really mean anything it's just a made up number so attack power equals a so we're going to pass it in like a value of 10 and you know the ninja's attack power is 10 whatever the heck attack power means right so now let's go ahead and make another class let's go ahead and make class ninja and this ninja class is going to inherit from public enemy so all ninjas are enemies we already know that so now let's go ahead and add some things that are specific to only ninjas well in each of these classes let's go ahead and make an attack function so public void attack there we go and now what we can do is I guess I'll just throw everything on one line um this is the part that's gonna be specific to the ninja class so right here we're saying alright we're gonna have some ninjas but a ninja is still gonna be enemy I mean the enemy is an enemy so whenever a ninja attack uh, what do I want them to do just see out on the screen um I am a ninja ninja chop and it'll be like minus not ninja cop come on ninja chop and it'll be like a minus and then you write the attack power because remember since it's an enemy it has that attack power attribute that it inherited hopefully you guys watch my uh, last couple tutorials and aren't like what the heck does inheritance mean and then just go ahead and end that line right there so now we have a ninja class that has all this crap from enemy since it inherited from enemy and it also has its own specific attack function so whenever a ninja attacks it's gonna say I'm a ninja ninja chop minus 10 like it did 10 damage to you or something so let's go ahead and copy this and we'll make another um, class right here we'll call this class actually I'm about to scroll off the screen so let me just bump this up and we'll make you know this 
a monster class. Now a monster is also an enemy, so you have two enemies. You have a ninja and a monster. However, when a monster attack, it says, um, monster must eat you. Explanation point, explanation point. And it'll be like minus 25 or something. Like eating you doesn't kill you. It only does 25 damage. So basically what we have here is three classes. We have an enemy class, which is common to all enemies. So all enemies are going to have an attack power. However, each specific enemy attacks in a specific way. A ninja is going to chop you, and a monster is going to eat you. So let's go ahead and start coding and making all these objects. So in our main right here, let's go ahead and make a ninja object. Ninja. And I'll just name this N and a monster object and I'll just name this M so you got a ninja and a monster and now what we need to do is we need to make two enemy objects so let me go ahead enemy and make a pointer and we'll just name this enemy one and we're gonna set this equal to the address of our ninja object now before I go on let me say this because this ninja object is of type enemy remember all ninjas are indeed enemies all monsters are indeed enemies that's why we can do this that's why we can say the address equal to the pointer so anything that an enemy can do a ninja can do does that make sense it should and also anything an enemy can do a monster can do so let's go ahead and just I shouldn't do this you should never copy and paste because you always mess up stuff enemy 2 will set this equal to monster address so basically what we can do now is this we can use that enemy 1 object and remember whenever you're working with pointer functions you need that little arrow and you see it already pops up attack power so our program already knows that any, any enemy object you can call attack power because even if it's a ninja, a monster, they all have an attack power. So that's why this is valid. So whenever you set your attack power to, you know, uh, a ninja can do like 20 damage or 29 or whatever, it already knows that it's supposed to apply this to the ninja object. So even though we're setting it enemy, attack power 29 it knows that indeed since it's pointing to the ninja object that means the ninja's attack power is 29 so basically before I go on because a ninja is a type of enemy this is valid this line of code right here anything that ninjas can do or excuse me anything that an enemy can do a ninja can do because a ninja is just a more specific type of enemy so every um, how should I say this? Every enemy has an attack power, so that's why we're able to do this. Every enemy has an attack power, and the reason it knows whose attack power to set is because it's a ninja object right here. Enemy 1 equals a ninja object. So let's go ahead and just copy this. Again, you should never copy it, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll set enemy 2, which is the monster, we'll set this attack power equal to, you know, 99 or something stupid. So now we can go ahead and with each of these objects, we can call attack and it will give it that own custom attack. So n attack, I already filled it in first, and m attack. So we kind of used a combination of, you know, two different classes. Using the general enemy class, we set the attack power and then whenever it attacks, it's going to use that attack power like uh, I'm a ninja, ninja chop 29. So let's go ahead and run this and see if I forgot any semicolons or anything. And I did, so hold on a second. Oh, I see what I did wrong. What I did wrong is I actually just tried setting the uh, attack power, and the method was called set attack power. So let's go ahead and copy this, and we'll set attack power to 29 and set attack power to 99. Now, if we go ahead and build and run that, there we go. It says, I am a ninja, ninja chop, minus 29. And the reason it knew minus 29 was because of this line right here and uh, whenever we set the enemy 2 which was an enemy object but it knows that it's supposed to be working with that monster object whenever we set that equal to set that attack p power equal to 99 right there had to find it it knows that whenever the monster attacked it was supposed to have an attack power of 99 
So that is basically uh, how you can do that. And uh, I guess I'll see you guys later.